Brooklyn. This is Brooke Lomi's podcast, the first one with the video. Hey, that's that's pretty cool. I am honored to be on the first uh, uh, Brooke Lomi's co- fo- podcast. <laughs> <laughs> the first Brooke Lomi's podcast with a video. Component. Okay. I also yeah. feel honored being on the first COD Fod podcast. Here. <laughs> <laughs> I cough. <laughs> with my good buddies, Austin Jones and Tyler Alm. What's that? Our oh. wonderful host. Yeah. What do you got for us today? Well, let's see, let's see. So, uh, so I talked about it in the last podcast, but uh, I just moved to Austin, like you know, like a month ago. Mm-hmm. And uh, has it only been a month? It's I only been. It's it hasn't even been a month. I don't think. What? Well, actually, I haven't been working a month, but because uh, I started my job like a week after. That's I got true. Here. That's true. I feel like you've been here for at least a month. Well, yeah, I've been here for actually probably well, let's see, like a month and a couple of days. Yeah. But anyways, uh, I moved here uh, to come see this little sexy fuck. And then uh, Nick is visiting from California right now, so you know, like uh, all the way from the West Coast, yeah, sunny West, West Coast. Coast. West Coast. Yeah, we're from me. there. He's here right now. Mm-hmm. He's gonna go back eventually. Yeah, mm-hmm. Sexy. Mm-hmm. but I know. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, so we are we're all together right now. So we thought, hey, just might as well do the podcast. And mm-hmm. since uh, Austin's big, nice hunk of wood is here. Um, <laughs> You know, it's it's. It, we thought it'd be a good good opportunity to record <laughs> record a podcast together. Oh man! And you guys are just excited. You know, you you guys are doing this because you're excited from your performance yesterday. Oh yeah. Yeah. What yeah, that was fun. Uh. Good segue. Yeah. Good segue. <laughs> <laughs> so we were um we were going downtown. We were just really looking at like uh like bar streets and, and stuff like that we were we started at rainy and since it was a tuesday there wasn't a whole lot going on on rainy street so we went over to uh dirty sixth which for people who aren't from austin and aren't familiar with sixth street like we should do that first like yeah east, so east dirty and west you should explain that yeah well basically the gist of it uh, we went to dirty six and that's where all like the 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 real uh crunk bars are and during like we <laughs> on weeknights they like block it off and people are all bar hopping it's it's a fun time mm-hmm. um and we were going over there, and we heard live music, and it's been a while since we've seen live music, you know, with everything going on. So we went up there, and uh, dude was really good, was really cool, and was letting people sing with him, but with off of a song, like a list of like songs that you could request. Mm-hmm. And so Nick and I both sang some songs, and after that, he's like, "Hey, y'all sound pretty good. Y'all want to like, uh, y'all want to like hop up here and grab the guitar." And, so and we're we, like, "What? Yeah, Fuck yeah, yeah. You're, you're yeah. a freaking two thousand dollar Taylor." That yeah, that was a nice, that was a nice guitar. <laughs> that really was, yeah. man. Yeah, it sounded was, good. It was a, mm-hmm. uh, and you sounded great. You sounded great too, yeah, dude. Thank you. Seriously, mm-hmm. like, check us out on uh, on Instagram because we'll be posting <laughs> those videos it's right here. Thanks, uh, Danny. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Danny. <laughs> exactly. Thank you, Danny. Uh, <laughs> At Nicholas Gaffman for myself and um, you're uh, Aust- just Austin Slade Jones on Instagram. Austin yeah. Slade Jones on yeah. Instagram, not mm-hmm. that whole thing, just Austin Slade Jones, mm-hmm. you know. But no, point- Austin Slade Jones on Instagram <laughs> at. <laughs> <laughs> and if you want to follow the band page for for Nick, it's at Blood Orange Renegades. All three of those words are put together, and it's all lowercase. So just at Blood Orange Renegades, and that was one of the the things about that night that I thought was incredibly cool because. Like my good friend said, we weren't expecting to see any live music that night. We were just trying to have a good time. Mm-hmm. Just know? go out to bars, get yeah. a couple beers, something like that. Yeah. And then all of a sudden... Take a couple shots. Yeah. Just, have, <laughs> you know, just kind of reunite. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, oh my goodness, what is that real music yeah. being played in front of people? Okay. And so we go up there and then lo and behold, freaking... He just happens to have a connection with us. Uh-huh. Our, yeah. Uh, he being uh, Joe Vega. Joe Vega. Yeah. yeah let's Joe, plug him uh, too. Actually. Yeah. yeah. At, at uh, what was it? The naked. The naked. Uh, on Instagram is at the naked Elvis. Yeah. yeah. That's the one. That's yeah. The one yeah. He was. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he's great. He Joe's is, fucking rad. And he yeah, is the good. real deal, man. Like, I was not expecting to see such a professional musician that night. Like that was incredible. See, the man. thing about Austin though is that being like really professional and just being good at performing is kind of the standard. Not to say mm-hmm. like not to like say that's belittle him because he was very good and he deserves mm-hmm. all the attention because he he did fucking great. He was just as funny as he was fucking talented. Yeah, yeah. Talented. No, he was he was incredible. Uh-huh. But like the standard for just performing in Austin, especially in like on like the nicer bars in Sixth Street and like the rooftop bars and stuff like we were hanging out at. Mm-hmm. Like you, you just have to be really good, you have to be professional. That's just because the music culture here revolves so much more around performing in general mm-hmm. that's just is sort of 
That's just that's what you got to be like. Look at his song list. Look at how yeah. fucking huge it is. Oh was. yeah, like he he had he had <sighs> nearly two hundred songs. Yeah, on there. with yeah. jokes put in jokes and like little writ yeah. like little things put they in were, every like, single he one. He was his own show. It he yeah. was like it was insane. I, I it was the one man Joe. It really was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, he was a yeah. uh, he was great. Good yeah. shit for sure. Mm. So here's the question: Whenever you hear live music, do you hear live music? Do you watch live music? Do you eat soup or do you drink soup? Those are two uh, questions. I, I eat, <laughs> I, I eat, or I, I drink soup first, and then I eat the bowl. <laughs> That's why you always get the ones that you can't eat. You can eat anything. Yeah, one gonna... bite at a time. <laughs> Every or, or Panera for 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 the uh, for the uh, the casuals, you just get a bread bowl and you can do the same thing. For the normies. <laughs> for, for with a bread bowl, you can, you too can be like Austin. Mm-hmm. <laughs> just eat them. <laughs> But yeah, we actually recorded the entire uh, performances on, for Asa and Nick. Uh, they're amazing. They're going to be on you guys. You already have yours on. Uh, you put it on your story. You didn't. Put yeah, it I already on. put it on my story. I'm down. I'm, in, I'm downloading them from Google Drive. Mm. So that way I can, mm. you know, put them in and maybe re-put them yeah, on the story ought to, eventually. I probably ought to, uh, should have posted them by now. That's mm-hmm. fine. I'll worry about it. Yeah, There's they, a little promo piece that you can yeah. put on somewhere. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's I mean, just like my phone, that, the same phone that I'm recording with right now yeah. that I record yeah, yeah, yeah. your performance with. Yeah, yeah. no, it's, it's I, I got the whole thing and I, I liked it. I mean, it sounded good. I, I really appreciate you actually recording the whole thing. Seriously, sure. you were on it, man. Yeah, right? <laughs> the, <laughs> Mr. Media is like, I was like, all right, cool. I got you. Yeah, I'm like, there's like, you're performing after how how long has it been since you guys performed? Uh, when was y- your last yes. time? I don't remember. Yes. <laughs> I actually don't remember. <laughs> too too long. Like the fact that we can't remember. I I was gonna say like I hadn't heard like live music in for the better part of a year. Yeah. Because of everything that happened, mm-hmm. you know, and it and being, performing oh my exactly God. Yeah, being no. being so, the the performers that Austin and I are it. It's hard to, you know, it's hard to hold yourself up for the most part because it, you feel it, when you can't perform, and this goes for any profession. If you can't do what you have such a burning to desire to do, not even so much that you want to do it, but that you have to, and you can't do it, then it just eats away at you. And the fact that we were able mm-hmm. to come across at random. Uh, this amazing guy who let us perform with him was a godsend. Mm-hmm. And it is just amazing how... I don't know. Fortunate. It, was it was just like I a just, fortunate like uh, alignment of circumstances mm-hmm. and situations, mm-hmm. you know? It really was because if we... Because we were going to go to a, like a different bar, but yeah. it was on 6, right? Mm-hmm. What do you mean like... Because we were going to go to one. We were going to go to the one across. Think, oh, to Shakespeare's. I think mm-hmm. we were going to go to Shakespeare's. And it was open, actually. Yeah. It was open, but we heard the live music come in. And we're like, ah, we know where we're At going. The, what was it called? It was the rooftop roof, roof one right across from Shakespeare's. It was like something, <laughs> something about a pig. But Blind uh, Pig was the one we went to. Yeah, Blind Pig. That's where, that's where, we, yeah. Mm-hmm. That's where we went to. Yeah, it was right mm-hmm. across from Shakespeare's. Yeah. And then, uh, what was the other place? It was, but it doesn't, that doesn't matter. The point is that... Uh, we happened to hear music downtown, mm-hmm. and then we were like, "Oh, music! We should go listen uh, mm-hmm. or watch, or whatever." You know? mm-hmm. And then uh, we go upstairs, and we sit at the table right next to him. Uh, the guy who's performing, Joe Vega, uh, comes and you know is like kind of jousting at us, kind of like making jokes, yeah. just being friendly, the nice guy that he is, a real good like, entertainer. Yeah, he's just, just a one man show, like we were talking about. And then uh, he's just out of just him being a good human being in the kindness of his heart. He was like, hey, you guys want to perform? I got a guitar. There's a stage. You guys are musicians. <laughs> I think he also kind of wanted to catch a little bit of the game. There's a baseball game plan, and while we were playing, he was watching that. <laughs> oh, that's so cute. <laughs> I mean, like, as I've, I've, I've had to do, like, three-hour shows before. Like, just, like, when I was still living in Oklahoma, I would perform in a, a little bar in Ada all the time, and they would they would hire me. Ada, like, Oklahoma? Yeah. Mm-hmm. They, they have a little music festival uh-huh. there. Yeah, <laughs> they have a little music festival there, but like most of the time that I went there to play, I would just be like me with an acoustic guitar for like three hours or so, and so I had to have a pretty long set list. And mm-hmm. uh, you, when you're singing for that long, it's kind of good to take breaks sometimes. Mm-hmm. So hopefully we were able to help him out in the same, maybe not as much as he helped us out, but like we were giving him That's some. Sure. He can still have sound going on 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 stage while he catches a break, catches mm-hmm. a drink, and it was a mutual the game. exchange. You know, yeah. he helped. I mean, us you out could, right? I. I'd, I'd like to believe that I helped him in mm-hmm. some way. <laughs> oh yeah, we gave him a break. He gave us a chance. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 
Gotcha. And yeah, I mean, uh, and it lo- he looked like he was enjoying watching you guys perform yeah. as well. I, I mean, I, I say that, but truthfully, he like he he probably was just like trying to put us on out of the goodness of his heart. I just, for my own sake, I want to believe that I helped him a little. Ah, I mean, mm-hmm. uh, I mean. He wouldn't have done it if he didn't want to. That's true. Right? You know, that's very true. So, I mean, like, I, I'm sure that uh, he enjoyed that. I certainly enjoyed that. Yeah. Everyone was clapping along. Yeah. Uh, jelly jam. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the song's I, called I, Jelly because mm. it's a jam. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> you played Burning Out, didn't you? I did. Um, Burning Out is is Blood Orange Renegade's um, first ever real song that was written for the band. Uh, and for me, uh, that's always been kind of a, I want that to be, a, I feel it's a staple for me playing live because it has, on one side, it has the energy, it has the the momentum that you want from a good uh, mm-hmm. live song. But for me personally, it, it just kind of, the lyrics kind of came out of nowhere uh, when I was uh, writing songs in, in college, when we were all... Uh, mm-hmm. together in college and mm-hmm. that was the first time that I had ever written something that was specifically for a band you know it, it, not it, just for like as a solo artist exactly not just because oh I want to experiment and I want to write a song for myself it's like no there's a specific sound that I'm trying to find and that happened to be the first glimpse of it mm-hmm. and it's always kind of I always try to play that one live even though I already have you know several other new songs out it's just a good one to pull out because it means so much to me personally gotcha you know it, it, and plus i mean timing wise it kind of fits because you know like we're here right mm-hmm. now right so you wrote it during college mm-hmm. not to mention i think a lot of people are kind of burning it out with the whole corona thing right now most definitely it's very very yeah. befitting i think mm-hmm. yeah. it i didn't even think twice about it uh it just kind of was like this is the song that needs to be played. What Not, was the intro that you, that you like that to introduce it? You said something like uh, the way I introduced it was essentially before be, I prefaced the song with a message that it doesn't matter what situation you're in, do not ever let yourself doubt yourself to the point where you believe you can't make it to that next step. Because in the chorus, the reason why it means so much to me personally, the chorus line is, um, when the stars are gone, look for a sun that's burning out. What I meant by that when I wrote it, what I'm trying to convey is, it doesn't matter if literally all the light that you are headed towards is gone, because if you keep going, and if you keep looking, then you will find that next beam of light. Mm. Gotcha, gotcha. So you if you can't. don't if you don't see the light at the end of the tunnel, you keep going until you see the light. Exactly. Is that, is that the idea? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Because no matter how hard life gets you, like mm-hmm. you, it'll only get you if you let it uh, keep you down. Mm-hmm. And I think that, like what you said, I think a lot of people are really feeling that, right. especially now that we're freaking yeah. uh, two quarters of the year in, mm-hmm. or yeah. two two thirds right. of the year in. Yeah, uh, yeah, with this and shit. With you know. and 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 for for everyone listening, Corona is gonna fucking end. Okay, <laughs> so like, it, listen to the podcast, chill out a little bit, grab a beer. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, we were gonna, gonna have some some beers on the podcast today. Oh, we fucking man, forgot. Okay. Guinness can good. wait. Guinness can wait. I mean, I wish yeah. you didn't have to, but that's you know, fine. Yeah. But right. yeah, and then uh, man, I the uh, jelly, right? You actually call uh, it jelly? Yeah, that's that's the title of the song. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, uh, it's, it's not relevant to I've heard to you any... play that riff so many times. Yeah. But I've never heard you perform it. You've never heard it me perform the song? Great. I've, I've never heard you perform it from beginning to end. Mm. I've seen you play the riff and maybe like, you know, maybe a couple verses. Yeah. But I've never heard you actually like perform the entire song. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. <laughs> it was good. It was Thanks, very right? good. Same here. Like, I you remember. you fucking recorded that song. Don't yeah, even yes, say yes. that. You in the recording in the demo, you tracked the bass in it, and you've performed that song with me yeah, multiple times. So you can't you can't don't even dare say. <laughs> <laughs> Got you. Oh, yeah, you, you didn't because you guys have never been on the podcast together before. Mm-hmm. No, you guys were in a band together for a yeah. Long we were in time. a band together because you guys are both like one man armies of instruments. Well, when nobody else is around, yeah, you kind of have to, to you know, 
one limb for the guitar, one limb for the bass, one uh, the, your feet for the drums. <laughs> Have like, you seen that that video of the dude with all the different pitched, the <laughs> different pitched of, like bells going like <laughs> like the one man band? He has like different horns everywhere. Yeah, <laughs> which is funny. Wait, how many instruments? What do you what, what instruments do you play? Uh, so mostly piano and guitar, like string instruments like that. Mm -hmm. uh, I've kind of I picked up drums a little bit, but I just I don't I can't keep like uh, I can't keep. Uh, like well practiced at it because I don't really have it. Mm -hmm. um, Bella, <laughs> I'm I mostly do, do podcast too. Bella, uh, <laughs> this is okay as long as it's okay with you guys. Yes. Oh yeah. Um, but uh, I, most of what I do is like composition. Shout out like sheet music for a bunch of different instruments that sometimes I can actually play. Sometimes I can't. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like I, I can't really like play a lot like 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 a wind or brass instruments. Mm -hmm. um, and then apart from that, I was a classically trained singer as well. Mm -hmm. And that's that's where I got a lot of my music theory education came from. Mm -hmm. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. So, and then you play? Yes, I do play. <laughs> well, I was in like, what do, what do you what do you play? Uh, a myriad of instruments. Um, I, I mainly focused on on guitar and vocals. Oh, bass also. I forgot to mention yeah. bass. I mean, that, that's kind of given with the guitar a lot of the time. Yeah. But as far as my musical history goes, um, it ranges from. Uh, trumpet is my first and my longest played instrument. Uh, so trumpet, guitar, bass, uh, singing, um, and several others. Um, drums as well. And the reason for that is because once I began to kind of branch out and learn guitar aside from trumpet, I started to realize, hey, uh, these lessons that I learned from this particular instrument can... Um, yeah, they apply to they apply to other ones. They apply the to other about, ones as well. The thing about the thing about music is that it's not a different language for every instrument. It's, they all speak the same language. Mm -hmm. So it's like once you understand how music kind of works, it's the the only like hump you really have to get over for an in instrument is like the uh, like the, like maybe like the, some like for instance on like a guitar, maybe like the finger positions mm -hmm. for different chords. But you already know what the chords are. Mm -hmm. You already know how chords work. You already know like how to play music in general. So you don't have to relearn that every time. You only have to learn that once. Mm -hmm. And because of that, I was able to develop and just because yeah. I enjoyed it so much, it, it, it opened learning and playing music is, is something that has become such an important part to me because it allows me to express creatively and uh, in such a way that I hadn't found prior to, uh, to up to that point. Uh, and it, it, I think it's something that everybody needs to um, discover in themselves, mm. not necessarily music specifically, but some creative outlet or some mm -hmm. way to express yourself, mm -hmm. um, you know, individualistically. Which, mm -hmm. you know, everyone has different mediums. You know, uh, you guys have music and various different mediums of uh, your expression of music. And then I have, well, this is your microphone, but mm -hmm. you know, like I have, yeah. I have the podcast that I do. I think it's my creative outlet that I enjoy doing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but I mean, everyone, that's actually pretty much what the podcast is about in the first place is like, okay, well you have something that you've been wanting to work on, right? You have a passion of some sort. Mm -hmm. um, how can you make that passion full time? Like how do you, how do you go from like having like this thing that you just started and then like turning that into like a full time career or into something that, uh, like when you retire or something, or if you, you know, already have your passive income and like, you know, you don't have to work. And it's like, how can you like, you know, like build, like how can you build and like expand on top of that outlet and that desire, right? Um, that's pretty much what the podcast is about. And so this is why specifically like I've had you guys in the podcast quite a bit is because you guys are similar. Uh, you, you guys fit, fit the, the, the model of what, people that are listening to this either are want to be or will be in the future and so it's nice having you guys on here because like you know what i've been playing guitar for fucking uh double digits in years you know i've been gigging for ever and you know and you guys have had your more than fair share of struggles uh i'm yeah. sure with performing and finding gigs uh yes. not to mention the uh, the one that remember the one that we went to in uh where uh, there's that one friend of ours from from OC. Don't oh, you mean, are you ta you're talking you're talking about the one that is attached to the pizza place? Yeah, yeah. And uh, that, that one, was, for example, my was... throat was bleeding because you couldn't hear yourself. It was no, my throat mouth. was bleeding. I was sick anyway, and oh. I had just then like I when I was at OC, I was I, I was there on a classical singing scholarship, so I was in 
like multiple rehearsals a day because I was in multiple choirs and I was in uh, like I'm like private voice, so I had uh, I had to rehearse for that because I had my own like like list of songs that I needed to get prepared for like master classes and whatnot. And then uh, I was doing stuff with uh, with the band at the time, and so like I was I was always singing and I wasn't always uh, treating my voice the most help, most healthy way. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I just didn't really know how yet, to be honest. Mm -hmm. and so I was just overworking myself. I was 18 point. years old, like going to school for the first, like to college for the first time. Yeah. No, I, and so I just, I, I, uh, I just, I overworked my voice to such an extreme that I, like, I was like bleeding. Uh -huh. And then, and then you went to go perform. Uh, yeah, that I day, That day specifically, yeah. uh, was one of the days that you went to go perform with a bleeding throat. Yeah. Passion. That was a, that was a, that was a whole mess though. That wasn't one of my favorite gigs to say it lightly. Yeah, I mean, but it's like it, it's 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 that though. It's it's specifically that is that like you guys have had your like struggles. I mean, and that's and that's that's probably not even the worst of it. No, nah, there are plenty of gigs where I've played to just the sound guy, you know, because you invite people and they don't show up for whatever reason. Yeah. Uh, and then there are several gigs where you know you and I play together. And we play for you know we rocked 100 faces, 200 faces, you know. That one that one we did with uh, with Coriano Gibson. Exactly, uh, I will never forget that. That one, that one was that was that was probably up there with one of my favorite gigs to play. There was a that gig to so to preface this for the listeners, there was a gig that um, we were called upon. Uh, we being we being me uh, me you and our other friend uh, Chris Cherry. Mm -hmm. uh, he's a drummer, mm -hmm. an excellent drummer. Indeed. Um, we were in the, the band that we were playing in at the time. We were working with... Uh, uh, a hip-hop collaborative called Gorilla Breed. Mm -hmm. um, and they had originally put a band together because they wanted uh, their hip-hop artists to be able to perform with the band. Because that's a cool thing. Uh, there's a lot of like big hip-hop artists that play with like a band when they tour and when they do stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, I think most... Cross my, my, favorite, my, my, favorite, my favorite example is uh, Anderson, Anderson Pack. With uh, with the Free Nationals, they're they're really good. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you actually one of my favorite. You can watch their uh, their Tiny Desk concert. That's that's a really fun little little thing. Uh, if you just want a short example of them playing live, um, but like that's it's just it's become a pretty common thing. Mm -hmm. And there's a couple other um, pretty common thing to in hip hop to be mm -hmm. used as a resource. Yeah, to for, emphasize to, the show for for rappers to play with a band. Basically, mm -hmm. that's that's not it, it's not uncommon. It's cross pollination between different genres and mediums and things that you yeah. typically wouldn't put together. Yeah. But anyway, to 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 get to the actual point, they. They wanted to have, be able to have that, but none of the actual artists in the collaborative really ended up using us except for one. And so after a little while of just us wanting to, like, like trying to, like, to figure out what they wanted from us at all and then continuing to not use us, we were just like, well, we're just going to do our own thing. Mm -hmm. and, and right so, about that time was whenever our, it was Chris's friend. Yeah, Coriano. Cor Cor Coriano went to high school with Chris. And he was, I think on American Idol when he was, like, uh, like early high school. If I remember right, mm -hmm. um, and so this and this guy is, was the real deal as well. I, I love working he's, with him. He's yeah. a great guy. He's very uh, professional and like you and know, of course he's a talented singer and very musician. talented. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so what it, around this time he I, was it Chris that contacted him or did he contact us? Uh, he con Coriano contacted Chris because originally he was like I, I want I would, like this is a pretty big show. I want to have like some level of excitement beyond just the, like the, the audio tracks. I mm -hmm. want to have like a, a drummer. So he called Chris in and they were practicing and Chris is like, you know, I think that if you really wanted to, I have a couple of musicians that could learn this in a day. It's, they, they learn quickly and they're professional. If you want to bring in like a trio, like a little band to play with you, that you might be able to get what you're looking for a little bit more. Mm -hmm. And so he's like, that sounds like a great idea. So we called, called me in and I called you in mm -hmm. and we got a little thing together. And ever after after that, he pitched you, huh? Yeah, oh yeah, Chris. That's Chris will always do that. That's that's kind of how he is. He's big like, man. yeah, yeah, yeah. He uh, he's quite literally big too. He's a big guy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's definitely a big guy. I wouldn't. I mean, I wouldn't fight him for other reasons, but I wouldn't fight him if I didn't like him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. Uh. Anyway. <laughs> um. He uh. Yeah. It was just a. Uh, it was a fun gig. It was, a, it was at the uh, Criterion in Oklahoma City. Mm -hmm. And um, and we played... The show, we were opening up for um, 
uh, a big rapper. His name yeah, was, for for Young Dolph. Mm-hmm, for Young Dolph. Yeah. And so what we were we were going to be an opening act, mm-hmm. uh, and this show, all of his, uh, these fans. Uh, I would say what between fifteen hundred to two thousand people. Some, yeah, something it was like that. the biggest show that I personally had ever played, mm-hmm. and it was so gratifying. The, this is the point that I was uh, getting to: was that yes, we all have had our uh, musical struggles, but we've also had our wins as well. And this is one of those big ones because big wins. Yeah, big that, was wins. A, that was a W was for a us. Big win mm-hmm. because it's something that every musician. For the most part, wants to achieve. It want they want to 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 to, to f- what's the word? They want to experience uh, playing in front of as many people as possible. Because how many people were you saying were playing? In? I'd say in between fifteen hundred and two thousand. It was a people. big mm-hmm. ass gig, uh, and it was the real deal too. There's a light show and yeah. Well, uh, I mean, like when you get to that level of show, they're they're mm-hmm. like. There's not just one dude running to the ones and twos in the back with like a small it's like PA a whole squad. Yeah, yeah, they have a whole squad. They have they have black the, t-shirts, the whole shebang. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, I got I got I got pushed by a security guard for walking the wrong way backstage. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. The point is, is that um, that was such a, a gratifying moment for me personally because, like I said, it's just what we've been I've been trying to work towards for a long time with my own music, and to be able to play with. Uh, my best bud Austin, you know, was it was the best, and it's something that I'll never forget. Mm-hmm. So now let me ask you this: is uh, so you guys have different projects going on in different places. You yeah. being in California, and you're is it just you and Chris right now? Out in California, what do yeah. You mean? Look for for a bor for blower. Yeah, Canada right guys. now, um, it's just the it's just the two of us, uh, Chris. My wife is uh, my drummer, and she is a an amazing drummer and uh, the most amazing person in the world. And she she really has become kind of the 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 backbone of the band as far as helping to convey the image that I have in my head mm-hmm. because of the band. Of mm-hmm. what it would be. Because she she didn't originally want to um, be the drummer. She because she plays drums herself, and she had no intention of, um, like, stepping... Making a profession, or exactly. like actually performing. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then one day I said, uh, you're my drummer now. <laughs> and, and It was like, okay. Okay. <laughs> and then several months later, uh, she we've been able to lock in together really well. And this year was supposed to be the, the year where we both could go out and perform... Uh, and get the word out of uh, our band because we actually have some music out that we're really, really proud of. Mm-hmm. Um, Which is all on the Instagram as well. It's it's on Spotify as well, though. Huh? Like you have a lot of yes, music it's on every platform that uh, you can think of. Mm-hmm. Thanks you, uh, thanks to DistroKid. No paid sponsorship here. Oh, yeah. Uh, DistroKid's great. Mm-hmm. DistroKid is fantastic. Yeah. Is it for distribution? Specifically? Yes. Yeah. Uh-huh. I used to use Anchor. TuneCore. We use Anchor for podcasts. Oh, really? It's a, spe- it's a different yeah, one. I, yeah, I'm, sh- I'm sure it works in a similar way. Yeah. It's like uh, just all the platforms that uh, you would want to have your music distributed on, it gets distributed on just by uploading it to DistroKid. Yeah. Is mm-hmm. that how it works? Yeah. Yep. Same exactly. way. Exactly. And so Anchor's yeah. great. I'll, it's actually the sponsor for the video. Oh, nice! Really? Yeah. Well, nice. That might be a good segue then. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> and word about our sponsor. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but but the, the ad starts at the beginning, and yeah. then actually, I don't do it at the end. Just at the beginning. Mm-hmm. Okay. So yeah, I have one ad. But getting on. back That's to cool. uh, to Chris, the reason why we're just a duo right now is because we, me personally, I haven't. I've played with so many musicians uh, at this point that it's it's been so hard to find someone who's consistent like uh, like Austin or Chris Cherry or my wife someone who will show up and knows what they're doing uh, and has the same mindset as we're trying to further our goals in life we're trying to reach this specific point and we're gonna work together in order to make that happen mm-hmm. Versus just wasting time. Right. From what I what I've heard from Austin quite a bit is it's you can find talented, you can find professional, but it's really hard to find a mixture of both. Yeah. That for me, like like yeah, professionalism always like whenever you're working with some people, that's kind of like 
first and foremost, like professionalism and a work ethic. If you're performing, but, then as a professional. But for, for me, the one thing that I look for, apart from like just talent necessarily, because there's certain people that can like sit in their room and play like like YYZ on the drums, but they don't really have any, what I, where I, I sort of think of it as like artistic or like creative judgment. I think creative work judgment is probably a better way to put it, mm -hmm. but like creative judgment. If it's a project it's that a musical I'm... musical autonomy almost. Yeah, it's like if I'm... For instance, I'll use Chris Cherry as an example. And I'll I, actually, I, I'll use you as an example. There's, uh, like, um, whenever, like, you're either playing guitar with me on one of my songs or playing bass with me on one of my songs, I don't tell you what to do on your instrument because the ideas you have for it are just going to be better anyway. Like, I might have a general outline or an idea of what I would want you to play on the bass for my song, but I usually don't say it unless there's, like, a part where it's like, I don't really know what to do here. Mm -hmm. I'm like, well, here's kind of what I had in mind. But I usually don't, I don't really say anything because whenever I'm like, oh, here's here's the chord progression, here's the song, and you just play something, I'm like, actually, that I like that better than what I had in mind. Uh, yeah, yeah, Nick, this is why I want to work with you. Is yeah, exactly. You can do it better than I can. Yeah, well, you can, if, if you're playing an instrument that I'm not playing, I would hope that you'd be better at that instrument than me. That makes a lot of sense. Because, I mean, why would you tell the person who's better at the instrument how to play it? Yeah, I don't, like, I don't want to micromanage people. And if it's a pro project I'm in charge of, I absolutely don't want to do that. I just want to be... I want people to be able to do it well without me... Like, Which, I can... Going back to this being a creative outlet, like you were talking about earlier, it's like, you know, like... Sometimes, you know, you have to fit a mold for, like, a performance or something like that. I get yeah. it. But it's like, if you're a musician, like, first and foremost, you're a creative individual. I yeah. hope. I hope, at least. Like, someone's creative judgment isn't necessarily, like, um, it isn't necessarily, uh, like, music, like, an instrument specific. Uh, no. Bring it down, okay? It's not usually instrument specific. It's like, the, it's like the decisions you make on your instrument are good. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't have to tell you what decisions to make on your instrument because they're just going to be good ideas anyway. Mm -hmm. So, like, that, that's kind of what I meant by what I said earlier about, like, I don't have to tell you what to do because you're, you're going to have good ideas. It's it's not necessarily just being good at your instrument because, like I said, there's people who can play YYZ on the drums in their room, but when they get with a band and you just play something, they can't really do anything, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, they'll just be like, what do I do? Or they'll play something and it's just like... Oh, I'll just play a four four fill here, or mm -hmm. just do too many. You know, like you, you don't want to. Like I don't want to have to deal just with that. Instinctually, I, just, I just, want, just knows what to do. With yeah, that. exactly. I play something, and they just play something that goes along with it and sounds good. That's mm -hmm. not just being good at your instrument. That's having good judgment. Mm -hmm. That's rare, huh? Yeah, that's that's not very common. And I like working with people that have good judgment, mm -hmm. creatively mm -hmm. or artistically, or I don't really know how to put it. But that's yeah. that's that's, that's kind of it's for me working with musicians and performing with musicians or recording with musicians specifically. That's something that I I look out for. Mm, I see. I see. So. Um, you talked about Chris being on your uh, in your band with you, and then so I want to. So what I want to ask about is what's next. That, that's the big thing, right? Wow. That's the, what's next for you guys. Because the thing is, Corona has been killing everyone. It's been yeah. murdering everyone. It's just like the the uh, the lack of opportunity is the lack of networking. I was there's yeah. a lot of things that I was really because I'm. Like for I'm, you, I'm the lack of networking for other people for in other mediums, yeah. lots of different lacks of opportunity, yeah. lack of job. Yeah. Lack I'm, of I'm really lucky that I'm not out of gigs. Work. Yeah, right. Lack um, of money for a lot of people as well. Yeah. Lots of lots of lack. Lots of lack of opportunity. Lots of lack. Um, <laughs> I uh, the kind of I guess know, opposites. Yeah. yeah, I guess for me, I mean, a lot of what I've been doing lately actually hasn't been contemporary music at all. It's been like composing, uh, like orchestral music for. Video games and, and then I'm, I'm a also personal been, fan, like oh, huge yeah. personal. Thank I mean, you. I'm, I'm a personal fan of both you guys, but right now, like what I'm listening to, what I've been listening to for like the last year or two years, has been mainly orchestral music. Yeah, so, I, I, I love orchestral music. I like writing uh, stuff like that. Your stuff is fucking amazing. I can attest to that too. Like I, we can't oh, talk you. you we can't talk you up enough, man. Because <laughs> you, the way the path that you're on, uh, you're starting to really uh, chip away at the surface of the big world. That you're about to unlock up here, and the if matrix. you exactly, <laughs> and if you continue uh, down the road you're going on creatively, I, I really think you have some great things ahead of you, man. And uh, I think you should chase that because I think it's going to be really important in the future. 
There's like, despite the wall of Corona, you're like sprinting. You're like sprinting up the wall. You're like, Thanks. <laughs> mm-hmm. <Nice. laughs> so, yeah, I, I, uh, I, uh, I, I'm working on games periodically, mostly smaller games still with, uh, with our other friend Andoni. Not to mention, you learn how to code just for that. Yeah, I'm still, I'm, to be honest, I'm still working on that one. I, 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 I know the basics and I can, I've, I've, I'm, of C-sharp, I, I've, I've right? learned, yeah, C sharp. And Unity, I'm, uh, for Unity. Yeah, for Unity. You see sharp for Unity. I am, um, and I've been working real hard at getting better at Unity, and I've been working at getting working hard at getting better at C sharp, and I, I really have made a ton of progress. But like, if I were to like go apply for a job at like a major game studio, I, I still think I'm not. I'm still too far behind to do much more. Like, I guess when I'm working on projects and doing the uh, creative or not the. Uh, the technical sound design is what it's called. Mm-hmm. Um, it's it's like doing the programming for audio for a game. Uh, I'm leaning really hard into doing all my editing in like a software like Pro Tools and like mm-hmm. in a DAW. Or and I've, I've I've recently started using Logic also just because um, I'm kind of disappointed with Avid to be honest. Mm-hmm. But um, the anti plug. <laughs> the anti plug. I'm kind of disappointed with Avid. Yeah. Sure. yeah. So but you're you're going like there. multiple facets right now, especially because like right now since since you can't go and physically perform. I mean. We broke that mold yesterday, yeah. just a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I haven't been able to because perform, of that, and I haven't been able to network with people, so I might as well use this as an opportunity to, to make good your at, own music. To get to get indoors. good at things, to get good at things that I wouldn't have had time to otherwise. Uh-huh. So I'm I'm trying to get better at the technical sound design and at programming and in Unity because mm-hmm. if I end up like like finally being able to look for work for a like as like a for a game studio as a composer it would probably be helpful for me to be able to say like hey i can also do technical sound design i yeah, can also absolutely. program i can i'm also competent in unity i mean it will um, never hurt to have an additional even skill. even if even if i'm not the person who's actually doing that there and i really do find something like like a full-time position just writing music but you'll for get company, the jargon yeah exactly i'll get the jargon and i'll be able to more closely work with the people that do that because mm-hmm. that that'd be the person that i'd be sending my stuff to directly and they'd be like oh i need this to be more compatible here's in an this example way. of my job um i i sell um i sell a phone service and mm-hmm. i sell a cybersecurity product okay right um you know my dad's a network engineer and he told me a lot about networks mm-hmm. um and just not like a lot a lot but like you know like a couple uh, enough of to get here. the jargon as you put it right and I, I, right now, I'm wishing that I had listened to him a lot more because uh, I never thought that I would have to know, uh, you know, some network related, like cyber security, IT infrastructure related details mm-hmm. uh, ever in the future. Because I didn't expect to be, uh, I, you know, I didn't think I was going to be a network engineer. And I'm not, but I need to sell that price. I need to know something about that. And that's that's kind of where, where it is for you. It's like, I need a shallow knowledge, at least, mm-hmm. of uh, what I'm selling. And for you, it's like you need at least I, I a wanna, shallow knowledge. Yeah, I want a shallow knowledge to start out with. I don't. I, I want to end up with more than a shallow knowledge. I want to be competent enough. Like I, I know that I'm always gonna want to write music, and I don't think I'm ever gonna pursue something that's I not agree. music. And but I want I, to be. I'm tell I want you to be, why later on. I I want detail. to be competent enough to actually be able to deliver there too. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like I can't. I don't. It's not good enough to just be like oh. I, can, I like understand the jargon now. I'll just I'll go back to not working on it anymore. You want to know it inside and out. Yeah, I want I want I want to get good at it. I, I mean, I like to be good at things. Oh, of course. <laughs> you know, I feel I'm, the same way. Remember this part later because I have something to tell you later. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. I feel the same way because I, on my end, I I was using whenever the whole lockdown and stuff happened. I started using that time. Well. I'm not going to be going out anywhere, so I might as well sit down and really try to develop my production skills. Mm, yeah, your um, engineering has gotten really good. Thank you, my dude. I, I can't tell you how much I appreciate that. because yeah, your, your mixes are good, for sure. Thank you, because that's that's one thing that I'm, I'm trying to develop into for the future. I would like, I really do want to uh, further my production skills so I can mm-hmm. eventually... Um, bring forth clients and produce for them yeah. uh, along with developing the songwriting craft yeah. recently blood orange renegades put out uh, what we called quarantine covers because oh yeah, that was fun. we took three popular songs uh that we were all listening to at the time and i say all the two of us you know in the band uh, it was we, one from Joji, wasn't there? Um, that was a that was a, a different cover album, but this current one, we took three songs that were on the uh, the Billboard Top Ten at the time, uh, sat down, made arrangements for them, uh-huh. uh, and produced them. Uh, I sat down, recorded everything, mixed everything, and mastered everything within the span of a month. Uh, which, if you know anything about audio production, 
is a like that's a tall that's a tall that's order. a tall feat even just for three songs yeah. uh, to have it all from the ground up every instrument not just the stereotypical you know one guitar one bass drums and vocals they're like to develop uh, and add all the colors and flares is something that I'm really trying to push for so that way I'll have the production uh, side so, down mm, and so uh, make it sound as great and have a quick enough workflow so that way clients can come in and be like hey I like what you're doing can you produce for me yeah I'll be like yes and also develop the songwriting uh, because I want to also uh, have that come towards me as well I'd like to have clients come towards me and be like hey can you write this for me I need it by this time yeah. uh, or I can reach out to them and say I can do this for you for this rate uh, and feel confident enough in saying that I can. Mm. Be like the Walt Disney of songs. Of exactly. <laughs> Just be like, hey, give me an idea and I'll make your dreams come true. Mm -hmm. Exactly. <laughs> I will make everything for you. Mm -hmm. Because that all of this is to help further the the mission of my burning desire to create a life of music for myself. Uh, because that ever since I started learning that music is what... I'm geared for, uh, that is what I'm trying to cultivate for myself. I'm trying to create my own garden of music. Garden of music. Garden of music, exactly. And I'm going to get every... a tattoo on my back. Garden, garden of music. music. Garden I'm going to music. get that, that shikamaru in a bowl of ramen. <laughs> <laughs> and in all seriousness... Um, Cancel the podcast. Cancel the podcast. <laughs> on, uh, on that note, uh, signing off, both of no. But in all seriousness, every facet of my life, I want to uh, to make musical, and so this is where all of the this is where all of the the lyricism kind of goes towards as well. Mm. Is for me as a lyricist, yes, I I think about what I want to write about but for the most part I don't normally have a specific idea beforehand like when I first start tracking music uh, for a particular song maybe it starts with a riff maybe it starts with a line mm -hmm. and then it I just develop further from there and it the idea behind the song kind of manifests now I'm curious are you the same way with that? No, I don't think so. I don't think so. Because I don't. You you like to centralize and plan shit out a lot. Yeah, I I'm pretty. Uh, well, I to be honest, when I write lyrics, which it had been a really to be honest. Well, by the way, been, that's not just in music. That's like in general. Like you like to plan shit out a lot. I do. Yeah. Um, I like to know what's going on far enough in advance. Mm -hmm. uh, I still write pretty quickly, but I I definitely like to make sure that I've planned first mm -hmm. what I'm doing. Um, I don't really write lyrics quickly. I mean, I mean, I haven't written lyrics in a long time. Lyrics, that's something I'm slow at. With me, I'm, I'm more on the composition. I like the spicy chords. Mm -hmm. Spicy um, chords. You got um, a lot of spicy chords. You're just like, you know vomit you're... gold. <laughs> you're just like, I produce. <laughs> I, <laughs> indeed. Yeah, right I, don't, I don't write lyrics very much, but I uh, I, uh, I write, uh, I compose. I write, write the notes out and everything, like sheet music and whatnot. I do the paper. I do the paper. <laughs> I, yeah. Yeah. So that's that's what I do. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. So again, what's next though? Is uh what what's uh let's see here here's a here's a good one. Um, five years from now, where mm. so uh, a realistic expectation, and then the idealistic one that's still achievable. Um, realistic. I'd like to be realistically in five years. I'd like to be. Um, full-time just composing music for um, video games or like other like visual media mm -hmm. to me that's just become something that I really love to do and mm -hmm. I'd like to be doing that full-time in five years mm -hmm. the idealistic one idealistic one I don't know uh, have Hans Zimmer suck my dick <laughs> <laughs> Hans if you're listening <laughs> It's gonna be on the internet forever. <laughs> yes, it is. He's gonna hear it later and be like, "Hey, I'm sorry, Hans. I'll no, Hans never is obviously. Pee -pee. <laughs> you can pee pee touch me, and then I can pee pee touch you. Yeah. Or uh, and you're I, only I, saying that because you're a big fan of his. I'm I'm a big fan of Hans Zimmer. I like John Williams a bit more, to be honest. But 
John, like Hans Zimmer is just kind of like the direction that film music is going, or just mm. like a, like a, like m- music for media, like, or music for visual media. I mean, like, um, like a music for video games, music for movies, music for TV shows, shit like that. Mm. I see, it seems to be going in a more Hans Zimmer, a more production focused uh, direction. And to be honest, I think that if you want me to get nerdy for a second, please is, do. is a direct result of like, um, I kind of was kind of thinking about this the other day, to be honest. Uh, it's, By the way, uh, Danny's yeah getting in. Uh, he's he's trying yeah, to he's, start with production, so yeah. he's gonna he's gonna be listening and taking notes. And he's like, oh, oh. yes, oh <laughs> no, yes. I'm not I'm not gonna get so much into the technical of how to be like get into production. It's gonna be like why production. I mean, has become more prevalent than composition, mm-hmm. and which I don't necessarily think is a bad thing. It's not my preference, but I don't necessarily think it's a bad thing. Like, um, if you think about the. Um, the time it takes to become competent at um, at anything, and the increase, like the the increase of technology or the uh, improvement of technology over time, lowers the buy-in rate. It, like I said, if you yeah. think of so, like the threshold. Yeah, yeah, it lowers the threshold. So, like for instance, building a house is a lot faster and easier now because we have good power tools. Making a website is fucking easy because we have WordPress. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And so music production plug no. <laughs> <laughs> music production uh, is more focused on production now because you don't have to write a whole bunch of chords when you can you can play one chord on a MIDI keyboard and use all these effects to make it all wishy washy and it sounds badass. Mm-hmm. It sounds really cool that way. Mm-hmm. As long as you have the good uh, creative judgment and how to make it sound good mm-hmm. production wise, you don't necessarily have to spend a whole lot of time to become competent as a composer Absolutely. or as a pianist or as a guitarist, which to be honest, like that's not my preference. I like to write notes mm-hmm. and then focus about production after, but that's just the direction it's going. Hans Zimmer, yeah. albeit he is also a talented composer, but he has a lot more focus on production. And I think that a lot of aspiring people doing what I'm doing are focusing more on the production just because that's what's emphasized now that's what seems to be what's most important mm, i see i see and so it's like uh you know uh you don't have to go to the gym anymore because you can just use filters <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to do makeup anymore you don't have to buy nice clothes yeah and the filter gotcha the buy-in rate is super low to be hot <laughs> joe mean, rogan still, can be hot now with a still, filter <laughs> <laughs> still not my preference but <laughs> again the same i'm kidding i was I'm using that example because i'm well i don't know if this is the same word, but I'm disgusted with that. But that's a personal opinion of mine. But hmm. well, isn't that what all this is? Is personal opinions? Mm, yeah, it's not that's what it's for. That's my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a trigger. Okay, uh, and then so five years from now. Five years from now. So what? What were the two prefaces or presets? Uh, the Pre-tenses? realistic one, and then the upper end of like the the pretty idealistic realistic one. All right. So, uh, you mean like for, for Blood Runs Renegades or like just, just my music, your career, music in general. Yeah. So realistic five years from now, realistic, probably with the, with the rate that I and the, and, and going at musically, um, establish a good little fan base, uh, in Southern California, you know, maybe a few, uh, hundred genuine fans. Uh, of our music uh, five years from now. A um, few hundred fans in Oklahoma. And just little seeds here and there because mm-hmm. all of this is going to take a long time. It's I've been doing this stuff for 10 plus years mm-hmm. and it's just now starting to finally take a little bit of traction. It's, it's a very slow burn. Mm-hmm. And so that's definitely probably the way it's going to continue to go I with, mean, I feel with the rate that we're going. Exactly. <laughs> you know? and, but that's what you got to do. You got to keep moving forward yes um that's the central theme of this uh, podcast i think mm-hmm. but uh yeah have good little fan bases uh spread out across multiple states or counties hopefully more counties and states because i believe it's better to have more fans in one particular area than more fans all around the world uh as far as if you go like, there they're all they all just love you exactly that's uh-huh. you know you got to follow where the crowd is mm-hmm. um and then my name be established enough to where uh, what I had mentioned of I finally start getting clients coming to me, you know, and beginning that next chapter of the production era of my career. Hmm. Um, could it go either way? Could it? Could you? Could you start with uh, going 
into the production and then having the fan base? Is that possible? That's kind I'm of... being stupid. No, no, no. That's not stupid at all. That's kind of the idea behind what I'm doing now with uh, all of the releases that uh-huh. uh, we've been doing. We put out Blood Runs Renegades. We put out a the most current record, Passenger, in April. We put out the cover record uh, two months later. And I'm currently working on the next uh, music release, mm-hmm. which I'm looking to release, if not at the end of this year, then at the very soonest, uh, January. And I already have, no joke, I already have four or five of the next releases planned, which I'll continue. I'm No joke. Like, like you, wow. I'm like, it's all back here. And it's just a matter of... Okay, this is the next project. Let's work on it. Okay, I'm just about finished with this. Let's start working on the next thing. So that way, while that project I just finished is, uh, you know, out on the grill. The oh, on, yeah. on the, it, it, it's been on the grill. Yeah, yeah. So I work on a project. It's on the grill. It's just about done. Ding. It's out. Ten more burgers have already been cooking uh, for in the two minutes. In just, the meantime. Just working on it. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. And so... I'm culti- I'm creating with all of this. Uh, I'm creating a workflow that can always be continuous. Like, uh, is, is that called a like a water mill where it's just a continuous wheel yeah. of water, you know, being mm-hmm. pulled and then dumped, pulled and dumped. Yeah, that's essentially what I'm trying to turn my life into. The music machine. The music machine. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> the music man. Exactly. <laughs> I am the music man. Uh, nice. Trouble oh, with a capital man. T. Um, <laughs> stands for pool. Anyway, but the uh, idealistic is um, Blood Orange Renegades uh, blows up within a year or two, and then uh, you know, say we get put on like a myriad of Spotify playlists and uh, or Apple Music, um, and people start gravitating towards it. Fan base starts really growing, and we get to a position to where we can do that full time Mm -hmm. you know Mm -hmm. we can we can we're bringing in enough money bringing in enough money from streams and merchandise definitely yeah i think merchandise would be the big Mm -hmm. one streaming services doesn't make any money it really doesn't it's just marketing basically Mm -hmm. that's all it is so that i that's actually one thing that i uh, forgot to mention is like with all of these releases and uh, garnering a little bit more of a fan base that's of genuine fans rather Mm -hmm. than just friends and family being nice. Mm-hmm. It's putting us in a position to where we can start marketing the brand itself. Mm-hmm. That's kind of what the the mission is, like at least in this point in time. Right. Creating the Blood Orange Renegades yeah. brand. Which is, by the way, it's pretty much the same with the podcast. Too. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, at first it was just like my dad being like, oh, I'm just catching up on your life and stuff. You know we have listeners in Ireland now? Isn't that the craziest That's cool. thing? We have listeners in Ireland, the UK, uh, in like New Zealand, Australia, hmm. lots of different places. That's interesting, yeah. yeah. And all the listeners really that are cool. in those different yeah. places, like we know you're out there. Like, thank you for listening to this. Yeah, thank you for yeah, listening for sure. to my buddy Tyler's podcast. I think this is, I still firmly believe that this is a fantastic um, show and idea that is going to continue to snowball. Uh, because this, to me, is such a it's such a niche market that once it ignites, it's going to take off. Mm-hmm. Because I think this this whole it's what I told you whenever you first came up with this idea. It's like it's such a it's an idea that lends itself to the more interesting and uh, experimental ideas and discussions that not Definitely. a lot of podcasts I've come across do yeah because the thing is here's the thing like the theme of the podcast if i'm very very completely blatantly honest is super decentralized it's very very decentralized um what uh is the central theme of the podcast it it does genuinely come from the personalities that the podcast features uh which i think is different because the thing is there is no central topic there isn't like the central topic i was talking about is like pursue your passions like well what passions well, here, the thing is, I got together a bunch of different people that are pursuing their passions and have had success with it and have, are talking about their success. I have a role model for every person that's listening to this. I have a peer for every person that's listening to this. 
Uh, and that's that's the the whole idea, right? Is that getting you guys on here and going, wow, I'm 15 years old and I'm picking up the guitar. You know, I want a gig in a in a you know in like a in a like, band. Yeah, yeah. You know, like I, you know, like I'm just doing like little street gigs right now. You know, I, I perform uh, in the, at the campfire at the Christian camp that I go to. Mm. Uh, you know, but uh, but one day I'd like to you know perform uh, for hundreds, thousands of people. You know, well now. Yeah. Case in point, someone, who, people who have performed in front of thousands of people, mm-hmm. um, and the thing is, that's that's where it comes from for for, for us is that uh, okay, well here are guys that have done it, are doing it. Uh, well, actually, there is no will will be doing it. There is it's it's pretty much have done it or are doing it. Um, mm-hmm. Those are the people that are usually on this podcast and that speak on this podcast. So living proof that. There are actually people out there that know what they're doing and that are like you who want to do the same thing, mm-hmm. you know, and are at various levels of their their personal careers. Uh, and like I said, living proof that, yeah, you can do this too, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So you, you didn't tell me the, the idealistic five-year one. You, you, give me a real one. A real one? Yeah. Now, yeah, I know you kind of. I mean, that, that one. That one was kind of a. That one was kind of a. Uh, like a joke one, the Hans Zimmer. Well, it was. It was like a uh, symbolic way of putting it. It was a very interesting uh, symbol. <laughs> <laughs> I was using a piece of imagery. I think I, think I get. I, I, get, I think I get what you mean. Yeah, I, I. I know. I was putting it in a in, in funny way. Yeah, I was putting it in a funny way. I want to be. I would in five years. I would want to be the most idealistic outcome. Would be like the most uh, prominent uh, composer in the industry. Mm-hmm. I'm. I, I don't know if that's even a twenty year goal, like or at any time like possibility. But that would be it's certainly worthwhile. Mind. Well, it's certainly worth consider like trying to be good enough to be that way. I I, I really think that if you're going to be that well, way, you need to be the pursuit. What I meant to say is the pursuit is certainly more than worthwhile. Oh yeah, no, yeah, that's that's a way better way to put it. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, that my I, my idealistic five year goal would be to be the most prominent composer in my industry. You heard it here first. Check don't know if that don't know if that's gonna happen. I don't know if that's gonna happen if I were able to live to be a thousand and I could just spend that entire time getting better and better that's and better and better. But you never know. It's a good goal. Mm-hmm. But you know. What I've come to learn recently is that everybody that has these kind of thoughts, you having the thought of, I want to be the most prominent uh, composer in the industry uh, in this particular period of time. Me, I want to become uh, uh, famous enough that I could take the band anywhere in the world Mm -hmm. and people uh, have been touched by my lyrics, by my music. The reason... Uh, I, I, I believe this wholeheartedly now uh, and I say this because I need to continue to believe this is that everybody that thinks these thoughts will get there as long as they continue to follow that pursuit mm-hmm. because I think you would not deserve that thought if it you do not deserve that circumstance if that thought had never popped into your head in the first place. I don't know if the de- if deserve is the way to put it. I don't know if I agree with the deserve mm, portion of it. Okay. I, 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 I think that saying like, oh, pursue that, that, um, uh, pursue that, that goal or pursue that dream is too generic. I, I think that if you really, really legitimately have that goal, you should be actively all the time be thinking about like, what can I do? to make that happen like tangible what? yeah it needs yeah exactly it needs your your pursuit has to be made up of tangible steps mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. like it's that's it's not just like a it's not like a like a naruto arc i want to be famous yeah it's not it's it's mm-hmm. like there's real so you guys like, are both doing by the way let's no, add that as well you guys are thank you like i i think that the biggest mistake that people make who have like these big long-term goals like oh i i want to be I want to be a rock star, which is totally possible. Like I'm not. There's a lot of small, path, small little goals and posts. Yeah, that you, gotta you have to. You have to actively. You have to actively be pers- trying to figure out how to do those things. No, like no. I want to be. I want to be a, an accomplished composer. Mm-hmm. Um, so so I'm start? studying. So you start by studying. You start like you. I mean, actually, 
this isn't necessarily a composer, but something that that uh, I from an interview from multiple interviews of John Mayer mm-hmm. that uh, he said that, that I was like, oh, that's that's a good point. Um, that is applicable, I think, to any anything. When he's talking about uh, aspiring guitar players, then they're like, where do I start with like learning? Like if I'm learning by myself or even if I have a teacher, but there's things that I don't like that sound really crazy and I just I don't even know how to start to be that good or to think about how to play those things or how to think about understanding those things. He's like, well, take... Like when you're listening to something and you you hear a piece of a song that you like, that's interesting and cool, and I don't, I want to learn how. To, like you take it apart, you take that individual thing, you take it apart, figure out exactly how they do it, so that way you can apply it to what you do. And for me, I I was like, that makes a lot of sense because I hear compositions, I hear film scores, I hear hear like I play a video game, and I hear the music, I'm like, oh, that sounds really good. You can't stop it. That sounds really good. Mm. You 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 have to go like, okay, how is this made? How would I do it? Um, or like, you know, you, you have to stop, you have to look it up, you have to, if, if it means learning to read sheet music, mm-hmm. and if you're a guitar player, you don't want to do that, because no guitar player mm-hmm. ever wants to learn to read sheet music, no. but you have to, if you want to be, if you want to be doing if that. If you take it seriously. If you take it seriously. If you just want to like play the guitar, then yeah, then fine. What we're, we're talking about the same thing. Like, yeah, you have to, you, you, you have to take it seriously, you have to stop, you have to think, okay, if I'm going to be good at this, that means I need to study, mm-hmm. that means I need to you learn how to. You can't just do. Yeah, you have, you have to, to do and think at the same time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, it's you have to do whatever it takes, and that mm-hmm. means thinking, that means doing, that means. Mm-hmm. I mean, this is what I'm getting at with the thought like, of this. Your is your you your deserve. your process has to be your 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 pursuit has to be made up of tangible steps. That's mm-hmm. kind of the exactly. Gist of we're, it. And we're I talking I'll, about the same thing. I'll, I'll, I'd be de- beating a dead horse if I kept saying <laughs> that. But, <laughs> so I'll like, stop can there. I also add good. manageable, realistic, tangible steps? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Because the thing is, and. And, I, I'm, not, I'm not saying that you have to be like, oh, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna be at Carnegie Hall tomorrow. Like that's a long process. <laughs> well, the thing is, like, like some if, you, if you do don't, first. if you've yeah. never played an instrument before, like first, it's like, okay, well, I gotta learn how to, like, if you're learning how to play guitar, well, okay, well, let me learn some chords, maybe. Uh, let me, uh, like you said, learn how to read sheet music. That's a to, to be a musician. That for, for to be a composer, that's absolutely necessary. Mm-hmm. And so it's it's you know like you have like different. Um, little skill sets like you're, you're talking about john mayer with like a specific riff right yeah here's just, here's here's one that i i use right because my because okay. i do i do sales right yeah. i do sales and there's one thing that i saw my manager at the apple store do before i even started sales mm. this is one of the reasons why i really want to do sales in the first place because i was amazed by this is uh sell me this listen, <laughs> so what happened was uh I was I was talking with a guy and i was trying to fix his phone at the apple store mm-hmm. and uh this guy was getting really upset really uh, he was just kind of uneasy the entire time he was there, yeah. and he just kept kind of jabbing me, jabbing me, jabbing me, right? And I didn't know what to do. I was uh, this guy didn't like me. I didn't like him, obviously. So, yeah. you know, I was like, I don't like, fuck you. Just like, I want you to go the fuck away, right? Is, is what I was thinking in my head. So I was just like trying to get him out as fast as possible. My manager, uh, his name's Ryan. I won't say his last name. Ryan came by, and uh, he l- took one look at me. He analyzed in that situation that I was struggling with this customer and he came by the customer and he saw that this customer had a pin on his shirt that said, um, um, the, was it Oklahoma city university? Which one's one's the, the art school? Yeah. Yeah. That's Uh, Oklahoma city university. Yeah. And so he saw that he, uh, my manager saw that he had a pin of, uh, of that school and he was like, you know what? I went to that same school and uh, I did this, this. And he immediately started a conversation just by seeing the fact that he had a pin from that school. And then uh, that segued into a conversation that was friendly, friendlier, friendlier, friendlier. And he just kept elevating the mood, elevating the mood. And by the time that uh, like he was done with the conversation, it took about two minutes. Um, that guy was legitimately the m- most pleasant human being to work with. I was absolutely stunned whenever I saw that. And I've been wondering for fucking ever. Good management. He's just he was just really really good at what he did. Yeah. And I was like, you know what? I I want to learn how to do that. And that eventually became for me a career in sales. That's what I do now. Nice. Yeah, that's okay. one. That's one tangible riff for me. That'd yeah. Be like the one thing that you're able to do. Yeah. And that's one thing that uh, it's like now it's like whenever I see something that someone's wearing, I'm like, hey, I like your shoes or I like this and that. <laughs> yeah. And you you apply that trick. Yeah, absolutely. I do it all the time. Because uh, the thing is, like, and it's genuine too. Because, like, you know, yeah. like, and I'm, I'm gonna say something about myself, but I'm a very observant person. I like to look at a lot of different things, and 
um, you know, find um, how I can make a connection between mm -hmm. something. And so whenever I see something that I like, I make sure to laser focus on that and start there and then kind of, well, for lack of better words, infect the rest of the conversation. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So that's a, that's a skill set that I learned. That was one thing that I started working on. Um, and then uh, I started building other skills later on. Uh, on top of that, I'm still working on it. Yeah, because I, just I mean, started... you're, you're you're always working on it. Everyone's always working on it. Doesn't yeah. matter. John Williams probably still working on stuff. Yeah, absolutely. And so, man, how many minutes in are we? Uh, we're at about sixty-five minutes and twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Well, damn. Uh, it's like probably ten thirty, ten forty. Yeah, right now. Yeah. Um. Do you guys have anything specifically that you wanted to mention? Uh, I'll plug my YouTube channel real quick before yeah, we. Absolutely, before absolutely, please. Yeah, do. yeah. I, uh, my uh, orchestral composition music er, YouTube channel um, is just Austin Slade. We can put it in the description yeah, below absolutely. if you want. I'm also starting another YouTube channel that we can plug later. Mm -hmm. Oh, because you're gonna be on the podcast. I mean, like, yeah. we're living in the same city yeah. now. So, so well, and and yeah, I'll uh, we'll, we'll come up. It'll come up again. Mm -hmm. um but yeah i'll plug that later but for people who know me and listen to the podcast that's coming up mm -hmm. good good okay well you know what um i just realized something the joe rogan podcast is moving to austin so we're no longer going to be austin's biggest podcast anymore. <laughs> 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 no longer <laughs> no. right now no uh, yeah, right. Uh, uh, yeah five year goal yeah, yeah you know you never told us yours <laughs> yeah you. freaking you pressured us into ours. What's your five year? That's another sales trick. I got you guys talking, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> Anything else you want to plug? Uh, same things. Uh, my name is Nicholas Gathman, as always. And <laughs> so <laughs> I will never change. Oh, fuck. I, th I forgot. I thought your name was Fred. <laughs> nope, not this time. <laughs> Nicholas Gathman, uh, same thing. My personal Instagram is nicholas.gathman. Uh, my band is Blood Orange Renegades, and uh, same thing, all three of those words together. And we're continuing to put out some music. We're going to be putting out another record of a full band uh, within the next couple of months. If not that first, uh, then an acoustic record of some of our uh, more favorite songs that we've released recently, and cool. so on and so forth. Nice. And um, yeah, just keep an ear out for that. Because uh, we're we're coming all over you. Exactly. <laughs> I knew. I was like, "Come on, break the ice, <laughs> break it." <laughs> oh goodness. Okay. Yeah, we well, probably gotta call. I think Bella needs to go outside. Yeah. Well, she was bothering us about her. There we go. Here. That is the first um, video audio podcast yeah. uh, ever on the Broke Homies page. Uh, we're gonna try to do a lot more of these just going forward because. Uh, you know, before I was in California in the Bay Area, you were in SoCal, so we were distance-wise, we were uh, you know very separated, uh, and even more so separated from you being in Austin, mm -hmm. everyone else in OKC. So I didn't have people to record the uh, the usual people that I'd want to record the podcast with. Um, you have to they weren't like around. Via phone. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And Danny, for example, Danny's the prime example. He's across the pond. Yeah. You know? um, so. The, the big thing is now that we have a group of people that are going to be here and Donnie is going to be here, yeah. you're here, um, and then we're also, like, your friends are also musicians. Mm -hmm. It'd be yeah, nice to have them on. Musician friends. Musicians and non-musicians friends around here. They're just cool mm -hmm. people. Yeah. And uh, I think that the in terms of, you know, the, the creative pursuits that we talk about in the podcast... Uh, I think music is going to be one of the very, very big ones that we emphasize because well, Danny's personally interested as well. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, half, The half of Broke with Homies is big into music and the other half is also enjoys music very much so. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> like, uh, you know, one half, you know... Uh, I, I'm the fan that just wants to help promote you guys. That's what, that's what it is. I'm just, like, I'm just there with the pom-poms. Oh, yeah. With a hidden uh, podcast mic in the oh, pom-pom. In the pom -pom. <laughs> you are the cheerleader, and everyone needs their own cheerleader. You should get a little field recorder. Oh my goodness, yeah. That'd absolutely. be cool. I think Zoom makes a good one. Not cool. like not Zoom like the video chat thing. I think there's like an audio. Are are what, the, are once we get a specific level of ad know. revenue, then uh, we'll reinvest in again one of those. How's that? All right. I'll hold you to it. Yeah. Cool. But anyways, uh, oh, by the way, uh, don't do it for the money. 
No, but don't do it for the money. Do it because you love it. It makes it easier to uh, makes it easier to uh, to actually practice and get good at it. Yeah, money is cool, but um, do it for the money insofar as it allows you to continue doing what you do without spending time on anything else. Mm. That's 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 my, I think my usual. I mean, like making money is a great thing. But uh, the goal for making money is so that you don't have to do anything else but the thing that you love. Mm-hmm. That's that's what I how I always don't do it for the money. It. Get money to do the thing yes. that you're trying to do. It's Nick uh, Nike, <laughs> Nike Gathman guys. Nick, <laughs> Nick at night. Nike Gathman. <laughs> Nike Gathman. <laughs> Just do. Mm-hmm. Just do it. Okay. <laughs> and the Shia LaBeouf. On on that, we should all like close the Shia LaBeouf. Do, do it. it! <laughs> Bye, y'all. Oh, we definitely clicked the mic on that one. Bye, y'all.